You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? This is The Startup with Monique LeRae. I'm Monique LeRae. Welcome to another Sunday, a beautiful Sunday here in Southern California and on L.A. Talk Radio. I want to say thank you to all our listeners and sponsors and supporters. We're nearing our five-year episode, our anniversary show in September. I'm really excited about it. And um, we've got some updates on other things. I'll do that at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the show. Right now, I want to bring, bra- bring back Rick Caballo from Dead Horse Branding. Rick, what's hey, going on? How are you? I'm good. How are you, dear? Welcome back. I'm glad for a Sunday night. Not bad, right? <laughs> That's right. So you're on the East Coast, right? You're in, um, where are you at exactly? Well, not on the, well, sort of. We're um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. And uh, we're two hours in front of you guys, I believe. Oh, yeah. That's not too bad, right? Yeah. Six, 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 six o'clock there. So thank you for sharing um, another portion of your Sunday with us. I wanted to just commit the sh- whole show to you because you are really someone that is killing it. You're you're killing that horse. Oh, wow. <laughs> beating, beating it. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> beating so, the hell out of it. Right. Well, so for folks that maybe missed our little teaser snippet last time, why don't we go full screen, Sam? And why don't you introduce yourself, Rick, and tell us who you are and what your brand is? Okay. So I'm Rick Caballo. I'm the co owner of Dead Horse Branding, Nashville, Tennessee, and the art director. My wife is the other co owner, and um, she is the business and the brains behind it all. I'm just the arty farty guy. And uh, we work with all brands, mainly in the music business because we're in the Nashville, Tennessee and fashion. But we uh, we work across all brands from um, strategy, photography, logo design, websites, publicity, marketing, licensing. We do it all in-house. Um, we got a small team of about eight um and we all wear several hats at the same time and we have fun doing it and we love working with some of our clients that we have really cool um this is really cool because i can tell whenever we speak and even through the email with danielle everybody's having a good time over their dead horse it is not a dead horse it's actually a very happy and alive horse i mean i (laughs) (laughs) you guys seem cohesive and in every time I speak to you, which is now this is the second time, but I guess you're just smiling and happy. What's the key to that, Rick? What, you know, some of us startup people are exhausted. How can we? Quick, it's craziness, craziness. Um, right now I can tell you, I haven't stopped working all weekend. I just had a quick shower to come in and speak to you, but um, you. getting our offices ready. Um, we've moved office, um, got several clients. We work on several different time zones from Australia to Europe. It's crazy. And um, I mean, the best asset we have is our staff. They're amazing. And they um, carry a big load for us so we can do what we do. Yeah, that's good. It's smart. It's delegation. It sounds like you mentioned your wife has the business acumen side. I'm sure you have business acumen as well, but she's she's carrying that. You're more and more on the creative. And I think that's really smart, especially as a couple, right? Because you're maximizing each other's strengths you're probably not bumping heads too much because she's handling what she's good at you are too can you speak to that respectfully with boundaries if you want but like yeah um it's not easy um luckily she's very creative and oh sorry well she is very creative um very business and some creative i'm very creative in some business my biggest problem with uh business is the follow-through i can point fingers and do this and do that but following up is the hard thing for me because i'm a creative guy yeah um, she's amazing she keeps the wheels turning and um it's i would like i said it's not easy working with your partner or your wife or husband but um if it all locks in together and you, you're creating great stuff and it, it flows a lot easier yeah i love that and there's just this level of trust with your partner that you really can't find anywhere else and you know with family and friends but your your partners really you're building this together and not only that's the knowledge that she might be in the same room at the same time and she's listening to the same knowledge so i i reckon she knows how to design a logo as good as i can <laughs> right now she's heard it all before so <laughs> it's just a matter of um yeah just trying to trying to work together as, as easy as possible 
So, all right. So let's recap, you know, quickly about the name because we did touch on it on our, our little teaser interview that we had before a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. But in case people missed that, tell us how you came up with Dead Horse as the name of your company. So my last name is Caballo. It's Spanish. I'm Spanish. I was born in Australia and uh, means horse. Um, and we had a fashion brand called Corello, Melissa Core and Rick Caballo, Caballo. Corello, we put them together, and um, we dressed a lot of celebrities from Alice Cooper to Stephen Tyler to Miranda Lambert to Florida Georgia Line, um, the Nashville TV show. Uh, and one of the designs was the, the logo that we have today. It's called the Dead Horse logo, and it was a Dead Horse t shirt. We, it was a design, and we started up our company because we started working with Dead Horse, no, with Duck Dynasty. Duck and Dynasty. we started working with them, and then we went, well, let's start a branding company because obviously there's a lot of space in the world for it and we were doing it already for our Corello brand and people were asking us what you know who does your photography who does your website who does your your copy and all that sort of stuff so we said we did it so we started a branding company so everyone loved the dead horse t-shirt so we used that as the logo and the name and um i mean the skeleton frame is the framework for every brand so we just put flesh on the bone for everybody else that needs it yeah, that's really cool. I love that. And it, you just kind of went with the flow of it. And oftentimes I find projects kind of do that, right? Like you 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 go towards where the energy is, like what people are paying attention to and then what you're good at. And it kind of just happens. But yeah, um, and there's, yeah. there's a, obviously there's a negative um, con content to that name. Yeah, connotation, yeah. Connotation, but um that's we work with music, musicians and fashion people so it's cool to them it's like oh it's cool and but we have worked with some corporate companies that like banks and um venture capitalist companies that come to us for marketing or whatever and they love it they think it's cool they think they just want to be cool and edgy like like what we do and um, our clients so it's like okay works either way yeah yeah you want to be a little edgy and that's good so all right so let's talk about some um some tips for startups, right? Or people who are looking to license, do a licensing deal or, you know, do a 180 on their branding or just start with their branding. What tips, why would people come to your firm and hire your team? Um, what can you offer some of the startup community? Uh, good question. So basically it's all about strategy for us to start off with. Like it's like being able to drive to LA to New York What's the strategy? Okay, I'm going to drive. I'm going to fly. What can I afford? What are the finances? So I know from LA to New York, it's going to take, let's say, five days. I'm going to need four nights in a hotel. I'm going to need to gas my truck up or my car up maybe four or five times. That's going to go, okay, well, it's going to cost me $1,000. I've only got 900 So it's like, well, why are we going to go there? We're going to get stranded halfway, if you know what I mean. Then we're going to get, we have to allow a little bit of buffer because we're going to go left or right. We'll get lost. Um, so you have to factor all that into your brand and a lot of people don't do that. So a new startup, for example, let's say it's a hair salon or already the, the outgoing costs are through the roof, you know, you got to pay the rent, you got to pay electricity, you got to pay staff, you got to get a chair, you got to get a mirror, you got to get all the tools. So we work out the strategy and what's it look like and, and what's, you know, what's it feel like? What's it smell like? All those things. What's your favorite color? Um, the other question I do, especially for musicians, I always say, what would you be doing if you weren't a musician? And I said, oh, I'd be a truck driver or I'd be a whatever, or a motocross rider, or whatever, whatever that is. And then we say, okay, let's implement some of that into your brand because you need to be true to your core. And then you've got an audience, a captive audience already. So if you're a hair salon, for example, that's um, really edgy and rocky um, and you're focusing on getting celebrity market, it's a lot easier than just being a, a Joe Schmo down the road that's doing ten dollar haircuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I say stay true. Work out the strategy first. Where you want to go? Where you want to be in five years? What sort of finances you have got to kickstart something, mm -hmm. and then work from there. You know, all, you, all the, the the nitty gritty stuff can come later, but just high level stuff for now, and then we can get to the crux of it as we do a come like a consult it just comes out 
Yeah, a discovery. That's really a great way to think of it. Like, how are you going to get to New York from LA? Are you going to drive or are you going to fly? And then what's your budget and your time frame? I really love that. I might have to use that and refer to you and defer to you and give you the credit because that's a great, you're right. A lot of people do not think of it. They come up with the idea, they get excited and they're behind the ball. Like my first startup, that's, I was behind the ball because I didn't have you know, I didn't know. I was just, you know, throwing things against the wall, but I knew I had a great idea and you didn't really look at it like that. What, one thing that uh, our finance manager told me one day and it stuck like hell from years and years ago, he says, you don't hang, you hang uh, numbers of words, not words of numbers. So what that means is, is the word meaning the objective. The objective is to drive to New York from LA what's the cost in that you don't go i've got 10 grand let's do this business um and I'm build space rockets because that right. that 10 grand will get soaked up in a second so right. you need to be the, the objective needs to be clear and then you can go okay what's that going to cost i can't do it how i want to do it. okay well maybe i'm not ready yet or maybe what if i if i do away with this and do away with that is it still going to stand up on its own is it still going to be a viable business to grow um, so there's sort of certain things you can you can adjust and flex, um, be flexible on the way, but the core of it is you really need to get that objective down and work out what the cost is. Yes, and, great, and, great. And me as a designer, like there shouldn't be any constraints with design or creativity. You should just go for it. But I've been doing it that long that half of my brain's going, okay, how much is this going to cost? If I take this off, am I going to bring the budget down? Is it going to stand on its own? Yeah. Or do I spend the extra dollar? Is is it is the juice worth the squeeze? If yeah. I spend, if I get these napkins for my hair salon to put on the side there with like gold leaf and embossed thing for my clients, is that really gonna help my business, or is it just gonna be throwing money out the window? Yeah. And that's something yeah. that took me a long time to learn because I'm a creative guy. And I'm like, I want this. I want that. You know, I want a, a little red tag on the side of my shirt. You know, it's gonna cost you an extra fifty cents per shirt thousand shirts it's a lot of extra money is it is the juice worth the squeeze is and the juice worth the squeeze yeah so you just gotta no. work it out it's all it's all numbers first but don't let it stop stifle the creativity you know have big dreams big plans and then crunch the numbers and, and be re realistic about you know what the outcome's going to be no that's really really great and i think you're saying you know is the juice worth the squeeze i you often say keep it lean like in the beginning, keep it really lean. But I gotta tell you, I'm so glad I didn't speak to you before I did the pandemic films and ran around the world because I had no budget. I don't even know how I did it, Rick. I think back and I'm like, I think I was really extra crazy. Like what got into me? But I'm so glad I'm here in one piece, but it was quite stressful. But people along the way, you know? Yeah, I mean, we've had those moments too even before COVID, where we'd be working 80 hours a week oh. and it's just ridiculous it's like and and spinning our wheels sometimes but it was those lessons that got us to a point now where we're like we got this we know exactly what to do yeah. um if no one's showing you um the way then you have to the only way to learn is mistakes and don't make them again and don't make them again that's absolutely right learn from them and go forward all right, I'm excited to have you plug. We're going to keep talking with Rick. Rick, plug all your socials, your email. Like, where can people sign up with Dead Horse Branding if they are itching? They've got their budget, they've got their game plan, and they want to they want to talk to you. So you can reach us at info at deadhorsebranding.com. Uh, Dead Horse Branding is is our Instagram handle, um, same as uh, Facebook. Um, LinkedIn, we're we're all on all those platforms. But if you go to our website, www deadhorsebranding.com you can reach out to us there and one of our girls will get back to you right away <laughs> yeah we shout out to danielle hi danielle okay <laughs> um so let's talk about your dream client for q three and a half four because i guess we're in are we in three yeah we're in three no we're in two and a half three. Oh, whatever okay what's your ideal client for the rest of this year um maybe someone that you've never produced or you know branded before yeah um we do a lot in the music business so i would say we're doing fine we've got some great um legacy brands bands and and producers and music uh famous people that we've worked with but 
we also have some startup musicians that are, are climbing the ranks so we're good there so me personally i want to do more in the motorcycle world oh. um, custom motorcycles and, and stuff so there's a few brands out there that i'm looking at that i want to work with um i just at, at my age and and how many years i've been doing this now it's time for my turn to create um these days as most creative people get older it becomes a like you become a puppeteer and you start okay you do that you do that make that pink make that blue turn that line on and you're working it so i get to get my rocks off through other people's um accomplishments because if i was to sit down and paint a painting like like this one um it's something i do on my own or i can be involved with 10 projects at the same time and yeah. still do that painting that's so, awesome yeah, I see what you mean. You can delegate out and get your rocks off. Like, all right, I helped create that and help show someone the way and we did what we did, but I can also do what I want to do and have that release of creativity. Yeah, right? and, and like if I asked our staff, they would all have different um, answers as well, which is great. Um, we love working with anyone. Like it's a challenge. We love working with startups and we love working with legacy musicians and legacy brands because – they've done they've had a great career they've gone up especially for musicians and then as they get older or they pass away the estate takes over and they start flattening out the music starts being uh, irrelevant over time and then it starts going down so our 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 place is here and give them an uptick uh licensing new music uh merchandise all, all that sort of stuff just to give brands a little bit longer longevity yeah. um, like as you can see Elvis presley is still around still kicking ass like massive brand massive dollars getting pumped through there so yeah. so yeah so that's why we love working with legacy brands to give them um to give them the the outgoing of their work like send them off into the sunset and be proud of something and let it keep um generating income for itself smart smart identification on the flow chart there and the lifespan of a brand to, to, to you identified a niche in there where that was really smart. What analytics did you use for that? It was just something that you saw. Well, it depends. Um, like, for example, I'll use an example of Bo Diddley, who is uh, the originator. He created rock and roll. Amazing, amazing talent. Um, we've had the opportunity and luckily we've worked with them for a few years now. Um, as the music becomes irrelevant, you can see the numbers. They're not the, the estate's not getting them checks anymore, as, as many and few far between. So it's like, how do we reinvent this brand? You know, we bring out music that wasn't um, released before. We bring in collaborations. We re-record. We do new merchandise. We do licensing deals from from alcohol to um, you know figurines to guitars, all that sort of stuff to keep that name alive especially for someone that Bo Diddley deserves that. He created um, just a, a genre of music, multiple genres. He's been credited for rap music as well, early rap music. Yeah. So, so he deserves that. Elvis Presley got it. I mean, Elvis stole a lot of his moves. They used to film him from the waist up because they didn't want to, um, they didn't want to see Bo Diddley's legs doing this because that's what Elvis was doing. Yeah. So there's a lot of history there that needs to be um, – celebrated and and protected and um that's where that's we're very passionate about that um and even the, the startup startup bands and brands we want to we want to make sure they get a, a, enough juice to keep going because our thing is if we can get them going and making money then they're going to come back to us and use our services and we'll take them to the next level again and just keep growing together we've got we've got clients that have been with us for 10 years you know because it's a it's a good relationship it's better to take a little bit on the front end than all of it on the front end because if we just take a little bit and in five years time that business is blown up and it's, it's doing great things then we're going to be a part of that journey so no matter smart. what so smart. there's companies out there that are just okay it's going to be x amount boom thank you and then the the poor startup doesn't have any room to grow they've put all their money into the startup costs but they haven't thought about marketing yeah and no, it's true. I always say, you know, you want to play the, not that it's a game, but you want to have the long-term, long game relationship if you can, if you can provide that. And it comes through, you know, the passion for the legacy brands and the music and making sure that they're, they're enjoying that season of their career 
and the estate is I, that really does can't come through and it's smart i mean if i'm looking at the like you said the lifespan of the brand you got them right there where it's about to go down and you're bringing the chart you know the, the numbers back up yeah. um so it is it is important and we we're actually um we started a branding module it's called the dh7 and it's uh the strategy logo identity photography public relations um marketing and licensing so those keys key seven um formulas they they work on every any brand the formula is the same but it just changes what what the genre of the music or the type of brand it is is it you know a hair salon is it a big um, banking company it doesn't matter the formulas are the same so we've been lucky to teach it at a few universities in the us and a couple in colleges in australia and it's going well we really enjoy giving back to uh especially the students so they can learn by the time they finish their college they already got their brand down they're ready to go they're already ready to go i love it they've got <laughs> that's awesome so this is great so you, you know i'll just throw this out there and you can take you know tell me how you what you think about this uh as we know there's a lot of AI um, growth and advancement. It's an exciting time to learn about AI. And as a creative, you know, fellow creative, I'm a little bit hybrid like that. I'm like creative, but then also there's the business portion that I enjoy. Um, but with with the future, of th a lot of things being, you know, going to automation. Um, how do you see, you know, let me rephrase it. Let me say it like this. What What types of services and goods and products should people perhaps not start up right now because AI is coming in? Where should they be leaning in? That's, that's, that's a hard a tough, question, everybody. That's a, tough question. <laughs> that's a tough question. I mean, it, it's it's quite sad actually because our design skills are gonna be less and less. And But I think it's, we just been through a pandemic four years ago. The lights are gonna go out again and you better be ready to have your skills. And unfortunately, the pendulum will swing, you know, mm -hmm. we'll get a we'll get a period of like, if the lights are out, people are gonna have to learn how to do stuff with their hands again. Yeah. Um, my thing is, I can work with my hands, whether it's build a house, do a sculpture, paint, design something, sketch out lettering all by hand, I can do all that. Yeah. So that's all right. I've started using AI now. And it's like blowing my mind. It's great, was, right? It's exciting, it right? Amazing. Like even in Photoshop, it's I like, you it. just circle do this. And like, Oh, wow, that would have taken me 20 minutes to do that done in five seconds. That's right. So I think, I think, uh, stuff like in, in, um, construction, yeah. although there's going to be some automation there, I think construction is going to be fine for a mm -hmm. while because there, there's a lot of heavy lifting and obviously there's a lot of machinery that can do that. Yeah. Um, but as far as design music, mm -hmm. um, I've, you know, it's not, I think it's going to be taken over because a lot of people are going to go that route and just go do me a logo for my hair salon. I keep bringing up hair salon, but I'm, I haven't got one. We've got um, great hair. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hair either. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so design a logo and it's boom, it's done. And then five years time, everyone's going to have the same music. It's, it's happening now. The same design logos, same merchandise, same everything. And then it's going to get to a point where people are just going to get sick of it. And then people are going to have to start manipulating uh, AI. Or yeah. Well, yeah, you're, you know, and thank you for saying that. I think that you're, you're saying this really, you're, you're hitting on something because um, currently right now I'm studying it in one of my modules for my MBA and I'm really loving it. And if we use it in an ethical way and we use it in a smart way, like you said, it'll it'll give you some time back in your day where you could be doing other things, and the creative and the person the personalization of it, that AI can't give you that right. You still have to show up and perform at the concert and play the guitar. You still have to if you want something with, with a personal touch. You still have to prompt and tell it what to do, and you have to use your eyes and your brain to to discern if this looks like. The hairstylist shop down you know so yeah. there's ways where we can lean in and give quality to it but yeah construction's one of them i think you know personalized services are, are safe um but like fast food right that's gonna a lot of that's gonna be automated repetitive yeah. jobs will be automated. yeah and then obviously the quality of the food's going down and all that sort of stuff and we're getting poisoned every day by right. food you know um but 
I, I think, like you said, it's it's important and it's it's technology, and we're sort of advancing as a human race. We got to either grasp it or get left behind. You know, it's like the the radio people hanging on to radio and like, no, TV is just a fad. It's like, no, TV's and that's happening right now. So TV is gone now. It's all streaming now. Yeah, well, yeah. Pretty much. It's not all you, all the, <laughs> you have to go down that route. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I've, I've seen professional songwriters use it as ideas. As a, give me this, and then they, they use their brain skills to go, okay, that's a good idea. I'll piece that with this and that's that. But we've also had people that are underskilled that I've, I worked with a video director and um, for a client of ours and – I said, we want a treatment. You can't just say it's going to be this and that and that's it. There's nothing in between. So we get a treatment about 10 minutes later and it's like, it made no sense at all. I'm like, how does this even make sense? Yeah. And then uh, one of our um, staff members said, he's done that on chat GPT. Yeah. And that you got to have character development and there's, you can't, you can come up with a concept, but you have to use your brain to there's got to be a solid storyline and that's with yeah. anything it can be a music video or it could be a, a company that you're developing a brand uh, around so stories everything you know you need to have enough train line behind you and in yeah. front of you to create something special because people want to know your backstory and your front story where you're going and a lot of people that just start new it's like boom we're just starting up new it's like well hang on let's let's get this story down why did you start up you know, how long has this been going? Why are you so passionate about it? Was it your family heritage or is it, you know, why? So story is so important. Yeah, thank you for saying that. AI as a tool can be amazing and give you part of your day back, as Rick shared. Guys, um, Rick Caballo, I want to say it correctly, did Horace Branding. Um, give us your handles and where people can find you. One more time, Rick www.deadhorsebranding.com, um, Dead Horse Branding at Instagram. Uh, we're on LinkedIn, um, Facebook. Um, yeah, drop us a line if you need the help of anything. We love we love to do consulting as well. Like a lot of people can't afford the whole service, so we just we just go in and consult for the first time. Give you know give them some some guardrails to stay in between and, and give them some vision. Mm -hmm. And then later on, as they as they start turning over some cash, then they can come come in for us for some more services um because a lot of people go out there with um publicity oh we, we need to get some publicity I'm like, hang on a second you haven't even got a website so if you on tv today if we got you on tv how do you take advantage of that drive place the, drive the traffic right. where are you driving them? 100 thousand yeah. eyes on you now what? Yeah. what do you got what do you got to sell them what have you got to capture their email with you know how are you going to approach them back so you, you got to make sure you start the foundation and, and work your way up. No one starts at the roof. No, no, <laughs> you need that foundation. You gotta have the, you gotta put the flooring in the walls. Down. Oh, I love that. And now I do, I do use that one a lot. Oh, uh, well, Rick, thank you again for sharing um, again. And please thank your wife for sharing you with us uh, on a Sunday evening. And I can't wait to check in with you again and, and see what you're up to. Yeah. I think, I think you need to speak to Melissa. She, she's actually, she knows a lot more about me than business, but um, yeah, let's have her on next time. Yeah, for sure. All right, that's Rick. Good to see you, Rick, with Dead Horse Branding. <laughs> have a and, good one. Uh, all right, see you soon, dear. Bye. Bye bye. All right, guys. Um, so this show is um, 30 minutes today. Um, lots going on, exciting things going on. We have uh, in August the pandemic project on Roku and YouTube. We'll make some announcements and do some publicity for that and some ads. So you'll be seeing more announcements and get an update on that. Um, and we have a few celebrity, uh, celebrity charities coming up in the fall. Jacaranda again um, in November. Uh, we have F Cancer uh, coming up as well and some other cool things. So stick around for those announcements. Thank you so much to our sponsors. And I want to read them out this time so that I don't miss anybody because this uh, this brain right here is a good brain, but it's a busy brain. <laughs> I don't want to. Okay, so I want to say thank you to Omar Vacarera Studios. Um, thank you to the West Coast Olive Oil. What's going on, Mark? Thank you to Michael Solberg Family Wines. How you doing, Leah? Um, shout out to Next Level Global Solutions. How's it going, Shane? Thank you, Dr. Jess from the Dr. Jess brand. 
Iron Lace, how's it going, Marina? Thank you so much. And, of course, Sam here at LA Talk. We are, yeah, we're, we're barreling close to the fifth year show. I can't wait to tell you more about that. What will you start up today? Be well, be safe. See you next week. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on LA Talk Radio.